Right now I'm uploading a, a, an ISO file to the data store. And that's going to be my Windows 2019 server, I think. But I also want to put a Windows 2016 server on there as well. So I'll go back into the data store and I'll do data store browser. I created these two directories. If you go into ISO files, you'll see this is the one that's uploading right now. And if we go to upload, you navigate to whatever directory your ISO files is, are, are going to be in. And I have my 2016 one here. So you just hit open. And then down here, you can see upload file to data store. And that one's running. All right, so we got both of these running. And I just need to wait for those to be uploaded before I can actually build out any virtual machines that I would have connected to these ISO files. I'm sure I can build out the virtual machine and then later on connect them to the ISO file. I just don't feel like doing it that way. I'd rather just wait for the file to upload and then build the virtual machine later. I'll close this out now. And in networking, I've already added all of these different VLANs and you'll see that they all go to the same switch, right? Because I only have the one cable plugged into my UCS. And the way that I did this, I, I made it line up with the VLANs and the VLAN IDs that I have on the switch itself. And to show you what I did, I'll just create one here that I'll, I'll name it like test VLAN. Then I'll give it a fake VLAN ID. And you see it goes to the virtual switch, switch zero. That's the only one that I have a cable plugged into. And we'll add it. Now you can see that one here. Later on, now that I have all these added, later on I'll be adding NICs to my servers and I'll be putting them on these different port groups depending on which network they should be on. Now what we'll do is navigate to the virtual machine. We can see VMware tools are not installed. So I'll hit actions and we'll go to guest OS, install VMware tools. And so now VMware tools has been mounted. You can see down here, mount tools installer. It looks like that powered on the virtual machine, which is okay though, because I wanted to show this anyway. When you have this um, EFI virtual disk unsuccessful and all of those things, what we'll do is we'll power off the virtual machine. And now with that powered off, we'll go into edit, VM options, and we'll do boot options. And we'll change this from EFI to BIOS. Then I'll hit save. And let's power this on again. And now as you can see, it's actually booting up the operating system from the ISO file that we that we mapped this virtual machine to instead of all that EFI unsuccessful stuff. At this point, we can start configuring our Windows Server installation. I will leave it as English. Same, same, same. We'll hit next. Install now. I don't have a product key right now, so I, I will do it later. And I'll just say I don't have a product key. And once we're here, we need to be careful about what we choose. We need to know if our, if our product key is gonna be for Windows Server Standard or if it's gonna be Windows Server Data Center. For me, it's going to be standard, but, but specifically even here, we need to be careful because this option omits most of the Windows graphical environment managed with a command prompt and PowerShell. You're going to want to do the desktop experience. That's what everybody does. Do yourself a favor, select desktop experience and click next. Now we're prompted about the notices and license terms. We will just click accept the license terms. If you're not comfortable with that, make sure you go through and read the notice and license terms before you click on that. I'll hit next. And I'm doing a custom Windows install only because I'm not actually doing any sort of an upgrade here. This is where I want to install Windows. And now this is just going to go through and copy all the files over, get them ready for installation, install the features, installing updates and finishing up. Pause the recording so that the video doesn't play through all of this and then I'll kick the recording back on once it's ready. Now the installation is done and you can see that it's all loading up. And all I had to do was set my password and then I'm ready to log in. So I'll hit the control alt delete, which 
would be control alt insert here. For some reason, I'm not able to send the control alt delete using that option. So what I'll do is I'll launch the remote console this way. Earlier, I had just clicked right on it. So we'll say connect anyway. And now in this, using this setting, I could just hit control alt insert, or I can come up here and press this button to send the control alt delete, which as you can see, that's what it does. Now I'll log in with the password that I just set. And our installation of the Windows Server is done. I do not want to allow this to be discovered by other PCs on the network. We'll go ahead and close this out. And now that this is, is installed, we'll stop the video here and we'll do future videos about enabling RDP, changing password settings, getting, getting this server really optimized for a lab environment. And we'll also later on do some videos about configuring DNS, configuring the certificate authority, configuring um, DHCP, all this other great stuff, how to license the server, upgrading the software, anything that would really just get this thing to where we needed to be, including installing tools on it. But for now, this ends this video of creating the virtual machine and installing the software.